Hello brothers and sisters in Christ. I, uh, we're going to try to get to uh, church age. Is, why is church age not in the Bible and everything? Sorry about that. I just remind me. I am tired, but I'm also taking a break, brothers and sisters in Christ. I am redoing the chicken coop. And it's a long process, shoveling everything out, moving things around, fixing and repairing whatever needs to get repaired and everything. And as I was doing it, I knocked off one of my peaches. And I only got two peaches this year for my peach tree. Okay. And I was talking with the Lord when this fell off, and I was looking at it. And first and foremost, you need to evaluate your own life. I said, Lord, is this my life? Out of that whole tree, it's, it's getting to be a big tree. Is this all the fruit I've got? But I also started thinking about the body of Christ as a whole, saying, Lord, in these last days, is this the body of Christ? Is this all the fruit we have? We're bringing in bad fruit. Uh, we're not having any fruit, like rotten fruit. We're not having any fruit. So I thought that was interesting, but I did get one, at least one it looks like, that'll be good enough to eat. Let it ripen a little bit more when it sets on, on the counter. But uh, doing some hard work, so that's why I'm breathing a little heavily, so forgive me. And I've been under the weather a little bit. So please forgive me, forgive me, forgive me. So, are you a Bible believer? We started out by explaining, doing the test. Did you fail the test? I failed the test and everything. And then we went through and listed out all these things. Do you believe this? Do you believe that? And one of the things on that test was, do you believe in the church age? How many of you believe in the church age? And we, showed, we, showed, kind of, we told you it wasn't in the Bible. We didn't show you it wasn't in the Bible. So this study, we're going to be going through scriptures. I'll turn to some, but mainly I'm going to be reading the scriptures because there's a lot to go through, and I'm trying to keep things down to an hour, to an hour and a half. I know that brethren are watching more than one man in ministry, which you should be learning more than one man in ministry. Plus, you need to take a lot of time yourself to read the Bible. So get out your King James Bible. It's where you find the Holy Scriptures, the words that we're going to be talking about. I had someone try to hit me up again with that faulty argument. You said Bible. Bible's a location. I never said, inside the Bible it says the Bible. No, the Bible's a location where to find the Holy Scriptures, but you got some people who don't want to let go of words that aren't in the Bible, and they're trying to use anything as an excuse to use words in the Bible. When I say get your King James Bible, that's where you find God's perfect written word today. There's so many false locations where to find counterfeit by, uh, where, uh, ho scriptures, counterfeit scriptures. So where do we find the holy scriptures? The King James Bible. And don't let anybody steal that from you. Oh, you can't say King James Bible. Most of the time, the people that say Bible, you, could, you can't say Bible because Bible's not in the Bible. They'll turn around and say King James Authorized Version. You ask them, well, where does it say King James Authorized Version within the Holy Scriptures? It doesn't. They're just trying to fight to fight. Watch out for those. What I'm showing you, brothers and Christ, isn't fighting just to fight. This is what's causing division because brethren aren't sticking with the Word of God. They're going off traditions of men. They're going off church fathers. Okay. I've been talking with the Lord a lot about this, and it's like, somehow, uh, we talked about in the other study, so go watch the first study, about how it slowly crept in, yea, hath God said, better rendering would be, while professing to say that this book is perfect from cover to color, and we're not supposed to add to it or subtract from it, and yet, we are adding to it and subtracting from it. We're trying to improve upon it, while claiming to be Bible believers. Are you a Bible believer? Church age, or the time of, of the Gentiles? Okay. Now I already told you the answer. The answer was that the Bible says time of the Gentiles. It's the only time period this is called is the time of the Gentiles. And if I'm wrong, you can show me the scriptures if it's called something else. But let's start by looking up church age in a concordance. If I got a computer concordance. I've got a, a basic one, and then there's the sword searcher. So I didn't use it on the sword searcher. So the first thing that came up when I typed in church age was 2 Corinthians 11.8. And I got it right here. 2 Corinthians 11, I robbed other churches. So the word church is there, but it's church is. Because I don't, my basic sword searcher doesn't do specific words unless I open up uh, the sword searcher I have on the computer. But I have one on the internet that's just a basic one. Just a basic one. You type in the words, it'll try to find at least those letters anywhere. So the first time it came up for me was 2 Corinthians 11, 8. I robbed other churches. And church, the word church is in churches. Taking wages, age is in the word wages of them that do you service. So is that it? No, that's not it. So the second one that popped up was Ephesians 3.20. It's the only other one. Ephesians 3.21. 
Ephesians chapter 3, verse 21. So turn to Ephesians. Three twenty-one. Unto him be glory in the church. See the word church is there. By G Christ Jesus throughout all ages. All ages? World with without end, amen. So we see the word age, but it adds an S to it, ages. Okay. So church and ages is there, but the word church age isn't in the Bible. Right? You say, well, yeah, it is. Now, this should be enough for, for, for the Bible believers to say something is not right. We're saying things that aren't in the Bible. Why do we say church age? Well, we say church age because church is, all, is, is mentioned in this dispensation. I'm going to show that's wrong. But that's their big push. It's the church age because anytime you see church in the Bible, it has to do with this age, the dispensation that we're in. It has to do with the body of Christ. It has to do with the bride of Christ. We just saw there it said churches uh, throughout all ages. You mean there's churches in different dispensations? We're going to find that out here. Okay? But the moment you say, okay, wait a minute, I'm saying something that's not in the Bible for someone who loves the Word of God and for someone who believes that the Word of God is perfect from cover to cover, that it can't be improved upon, add thou not to his words, lest he reprove thee, and thou be found a liar, add that not, thou not to his word, it starts to bug us. It starts to prick our hearts, saying, why are we saying church age? Where did this come from, church fathers? It got weaseled the way in. Why? I'm going to get in ahead of myself, but I'll tell you why. So they can get us out of the dispensation that we're in and bring us into other dispensations. Bringing us into things that have nothing to do with the body of Christ today as far as doctrine. But there's always instruction in righteousness. We can always learn from other dispensations and what's going on in other dispensations. But the big push of changing God's word that I've noticed with all these studies is to get the body of Christ under a different dispensation. Okay. So, don't have to turn here, but dispensation, people always say dispensation is, is, is a falsehood. They have to. When they start saying things like church age, the great tribulation, um, and some of the other stuff that we talked about, and we'll go through them, it's all about they have to take away dispensations. Well, everything, the whole Bible's written to us. It's written for us. Oh yeah, the Bible says things were written before time or written for our learning. All scriptures given by inspiration of God is probable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. You can find one, sometimes two, more than one, but you find at least one of those things in everything. Okay, instruction in righteousness. That's what you can go through the whole Bible to find. But doctrine, you need to stick with this dispensation. And people don't seem to have a serious problem with that. Right. But 1 Corinthians 9.17 we read, for if I do these things willingly, I have a reward. But if against my will, a dispensation of the gospel is committed unto me. In other words, the God, there's a different gospel being dispensed today than there was when Jesus was walking the earth. And we're going to be talking about that, the kingdom of heaven. There's a different gospel in the time of Jacob's trouble. There's a different gospel in the day of the Lord. Okay, But the dispensation, God dispensed the gospel for today through Paul. Right. That's what he's saying there. Ephesians 1, that's dispensations. But they, oh, no, dispensations isn't in the Bible. Yes, it is. Ephesians 1.10, that in the dispensation of the fullness of times, he might gather together in one all things in Christ, both which are in heaven and which are on earth, even in him. Right. Ephesians 3.2, we read, If ye have heard of the dispensation of the grace of God which is given me to you, Lord. Who's the me? Paul. All right. To you were. Colossians 1.25 Whereof I am made a minister according to the dispensation of God which is given to me for you to fulfill the word of God. Dispensation is mentioned four times in the Bible. There are dispensations. There's different gospels in the Bible. Okay. Peter Ruckman, I know I'm, I, I, I hit Peter Ruckman sometimes when I disagree with him, but Peter Ruckman has a good study on... The, there's. What God, there's many Gospels in the Bible, which one's for us? And he does a good talk about, okay, like I just did it in simple form. Kingdom of Heaven was the Gospel when Jesus was here in the likeness of sinful flesh. God manifests in the flesh. When God the Father gave up his incorruptible body for a corruptible one and came and walked down here, it started out with John the Baptist. He was the only one called the Baptist, and there was a reason for it. Uh, 
and he was preaching water baptism to cleanse themselves because their king is coming and repent. It's repent, be baptized for the remission of sins for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. That was the gospel. It was. That's how you got saved back then. You had to confess that Jesus was the Christ, the son of the living God, and people kept rejecting that. Right? Then you get today, repentance towards God, faith in our Lord Jesus Christ, confess both in prayer, ask God to save you, and when he saves you, there's a changed life after salvation. But he saves you. That's the gospel today. In the time of Jacob's trouble, you have to go back to believing that Jesus Christ is uh, he's the Christ, the son of the living God, and that he came before, and you guys crucified him to the Jewish people, predominantly, but to the world, but to the Jewish people. You crucified him, he died, was buried, and rose again the third day, according to the scriptures. Okay? But you need to repent and believe that Jesus Christ is who he says he is. Okay. Then, there's the second part where you can't take the mark or worship the beast. And we read that in the last study about Revelation. You can't add to this book or subtract from this book, or he'll take out your part in the book of life. So there's works involved in the time of Jacob's trouble. Okay? It's a different gospel. Some things line up with today. One part of the gospel about Jesus Christ and what he went through, paying the price of sin, okay, that is there. And that's what people get confused on. But that's a whole other study. But there's dispensations. They're different gospels. So why would someone come in and say church age? Because we're going to point out here, we're going to show that they're trying to grab from other dispensations and put us in different dispensations. They're trying to cross dispensational lines by saying church age. Because if this is the church age, then anytime church is mentioned, it has to be about us, right? Because this is the church age. Yet, where's the scripture that says church age? It doesn't say church age. Why? Because there's churches in different dispensations. This is not the church age. This is, uh, I'm not going to get ahead of myself, but title, name for the dispensation. Let's get into that. But first, before we do that, Jeremiah 37. Jeremiah 37. When it gets to Old Testament, I'm still fumbling around trying to find things. <laughs> Forgive me. Jeremiah 30. Okay. Jeremiah chapter 30, verse 7. Alas, for that great, for that day is great, so that none is like it. It is even the time of Jacob's trouble, but he shall be saved out of it. Why you say, why are you reading this? Because there's times where it only mentions the title for a certain time period once. And people say, well, it only mentioned it once, so that that's more of a description. No. The time of Jacob's trouble, that seven-year time period that's coming up, it's called the time of Jacob's trouble. We're going to get this in a whole other study, why people take away the title of that seven-year time period and say the Great Tribulation. We'll get into that later. But for this study, I want to point out that it's mentioned once. Uh, Daniel 9, 24. Daniel 9, 24, real quick. Daniel 9, 24, it says, Seventy weeks are determined upon thy people. Seventy weeks. And 69, there's people who have done the study, we're not going to do this study here, but there's people who have done the study, great studies, that they show how 69 weeks have been accounted for. But that 70th week hasn't been accounted for. And each week represents seven years. That's how we get the seven-year time period for, that, uh, Dan, uh, for the time of Jacob's trouble. But Daniel's 70th week is more of a, we say Daniel's 70th week is another... Uh, title, it isn't. And I've got to correct myself. It's the time of Jacob's trouble. And we know it's 70 years because it's Daniel's 70th week. Okay? When he says 70 week, when Daniel's preaching that there's 70 weeks are determined upon thy people. And you can read that whole chapter, or that whole verse, I'm sorry. And it starts going through a description of what that time period's about. The Jews. No, no, it's still about the body of Christ. The church. The church. No. Okay? It's about the Jews. God goes back to dealing with the Jews. But we see there these things that the title in Jeremiah is mentioned once. So don't be surprised when you do studies that God will show you something that says, okay, it's mentioned once here, and that's a title for something, or a description for a certain time period or what's going on. Okay, Turn to Luke 21. So what is, the, uh, what is this time period called? Okay. From the death, burial, re resurrection of Jesus Christ to the catching away of the body of Christ. What is this time period called? Tur turn to Luke 21.
Luke 21. Twenty-four, And they shall fall by the edge of the sword, and shall be led away captive into all nations, and Jerusalem shall be trotted down of the Gentiles. He's taught, they're asking, when you read about this, they're asking, you know, about the end days, about the future. This is a future prophecy. This is after his death, burial, and resurrection. Right? So the Jews shall be trod on the Gentiles until the time of the Gentiles be fulfilled. When's the time of the Gentiles fulfilled? The catching away of the body of Christ. God's done with the Gentiles, uh, the world as a whole, and he's going back to dealing with the Jews. Because remember what we read up there in Daniel 70 weeks. Are determined upon thy people and upon thy holy city to finish, I'm sorry we didn't read it though, but to finish the transgression and to make an end of sin. He goes back to dealing with the Jewish people and only the Jewish people in the time of Jacob's trouble. Okay? Now, I've always said this before, in the old because people try to correct me, in the Old Testament, there were Gentiles that got circumcised, they kept the feast days, the holy days, the Sabbath days, they kept the Levitical laws, they were servants to the Jews, and I believe they, that they went to Abraham's bosom. Okay? If they were getting animal sacrifices done for them, and everything, and there was blood to cover their sins, and they were doing things God's way, but there was a time period where it was about the Jews being called out from the world. And the time of Jacob's trouble, it's going to go back to that. But it says, until the time of the Gentiles be fulfilled. That's what this time period's called. Turn to Ephesians 2, 4. Now, I've already explained this before. What does that mean? That means salvation goes out to the world. I'm getting ahead of myself. But Ephesians 2, 4. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 4. But God who is rich in his God who is rich in mercy for his great love wherewith he loved us, even when we were dead in sins, hath quickened us together with Christ, by grace ye are saved, and hath raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. That's what that's today. That in the ages to come he might show the exceeding riches of his grace and his kindness towards us through Christ Jesus. For by grace are ye saved through faith. Okay. God, salvation, when you do the whole study, real quick, just a side note. When you do a study on salvation throughout the whole Bible, it's always God saving man by his grace. That's always how it's been. It's God's grace saving man. God forgiving mankind. Okay. By his grace. There's faith and works involved in finding that grace. Sometimes it's works alone to find that grace. Sometimes it's faith you have to go through faith to find that grace. So there's works, there's faith, there's faith and works. It depends on the dispensation. But this dispensation, we're saved by God's grace, grace, and you find it through faith. And that not of yourselves, and I always say that because people try to say, well, it's grace alone. And they take repentance out, even though repentance is part of that faith, through that faith. Confessing both in prayer is part through that faith. They take they, they cut up the faith and make it only believe, only believe. That's that's what it means by faith. Faith alone, faith alone. The Bible never teaches faith alone. It teaches you have to go through the faith that God set up. Repentance, belief in the finished work of Jesus Christ on the cross, confessing both in prayer and asking God to save you. It takes faith to do all four of those things. And they try to take everything away except belief only, head knowledge trying to disguise head knowledge as faith when it's not faith. You just have the knowledge of Jesus Christ, but you don't have the true faith. Why? Because you skip repentance. How can you believe that Jesus died for your sins if you love your sins and don't see a problem with sin? It's just crazy, Phil. But let's, let's stick with the study here. And that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. Getting saved is not of works. But they hate verse 10. They don't like to keep reading verse 10. What does verse 10 say? For we are his workmanship, after salvation, we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus. If any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Talks about um, all scriptures given by inspiration is proper of doctrine for proof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Okay? Created in Christ Jesus unto good works. See, the good works come after salvation. And when we say, as the body of Christ, truly saved Bible believers, 
We believe the Holy Scriptures that are found in the King James Bible that it's perfect. We believe what the Bible says that after salvation, there's supposed to be good works. There's supposed to be evidence of salvation. They always say, well, it says not of works. Not. We're not saying getting saved. It takes works to get saved. You, God comes in and changes your life. You now get purchased. The Bible says, feed the church of God, which he had purchased with his own blood. He purchases you. you. He owns you. He starts changing your life. He starts commanding. You start obeying, and you start learning through the scriptures how to do good works, and you start doing them. If there's absolutely no good works and you just have a profession of faith and no changed life, you didn't get saved. Right here, created in Christ Jesus unto good works. That's the evidence of salvation. That's the evidence that you got saved by God's grace through faith. The changed life. Unto good works which God hath before ordained that we should walk in them. It's been before ordained? Yeah. Um... Calvinism always tries to say that it was we're guaranteed. There's people who are, are chosen to get saved. There's people who are chosen to go to hell. No, the ordained part is how we get saved. Salvation, the changed life after salvation, what salvation's all about. That was all set up from the beginning. Verse eleven. Wherefore remember that ye being in times past in the flesh, who are called uncircumcision by that which is called the circumcision in the flesh made by hands. That at that time, you were without Christ, being aliens. It's talking about the Old Testament, before Jesus Christ died on the cross. Okay. Some people say, well, it's your lost state. It could be your lost state, too. I mean, sometimes we can learn two things from the same passage. This is someone who's lost present tense. But also, for this study, when you read this, you can also say, okay, that's how the Gentiles were in the Old Testament. Wherefore, remember that being in times past Gentiles in the flesh, who are called uncircumcision, by that which is called the circumcision in the flesh made by hand, that at that time you were without Christ, being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel, and strangers from the covenant of promise. I'm not going to get ahead of myself, but what was salvation when Jesus was walking, and who was it for when he was walking on the earth? Okay. Covenant of promise, having no hope, and without God in the world. I, I use that verse a lot, that before I got saved, even today, before I got saved, I was without God and without hope in the world. In the Old Testament, okay, if you weren't a Jew, like I said, I believe some Gentiles got in, but for the most part, it, salvation is of the Jews. <coughs> and the Gentile world as a whole was without hope and without God in the world. Let's keep reading. But now, what's now? This dispensation. Salvation has gone out to the world. It's the time of the Gentiles, meaning salvation has gone out to the world. Not just for the Jews, but for the Jews and Gentiles. For everybody. Anybody can say, but now in Christ Jesus, ye who sometimes were afar off are made nigh by the blood of Christ. For he is our peace, who hath made both one, and hath broken down the middle wall of partition between us. We get adopted in. 15. Having abolished in the flesh of the enmity, even the law of commandments contained in ordinances, for to make in himself of twain one new man, so making peace. Uh, we're trying to be, we're getting reconciled to God the Father through his Son Jesus Christ. And that and that he might reconcile both unto God in one body by the cross, having slain the enemy thereby, and came and preached peace to you which were afar off, which were afar off, and to them that were nigh. Okay. Salvation, we're going to get into this next. I keep saying it, but we're going to show the scripture to back it up. Salvation is of the Jews. Now salvation's gone out to the world. Gentiles can be adopted in. We can be grafted in. Anybody can get saved today. And this dispensation, the time of the Gentiles, salvation goes out to the Gentiles. It goes out to the world. Anybody can get saved. <coughs> I apologize, brother says Christ. If I'm drinking a lot, because like I said, I'm a little under the weather. And I'm trying to get work done before before <laughs> before winter sets in. Her summer went by pretty fast, didn't it, brother says Christ? Summer went by really fast. So, so I read those verses to try to show that, hey, something changed. 
Before salvation uh, for the Gentiles as a whole, salvation wasn't out there for the Gentiles, for the whole world. Salvation was predominantly just for the Jewish people. There were some Gentiles, I believe, at the whole other study that got saved in the Old Testament. They didn't get saved, they, their sins got covered, and they still had to wait for Jesus to go down to Abraham's bosom. But that being said, predominantly salvation was just for the Jewish people. But that changed, something changed. What changed? Jesus died on the cross. They rejected Jesus Christ, but I'm getting ahead of myself. Before Jesus' death on the cross, okay, Matthew 10, 1, Matthew 10, 1. I know all this turning around, slowing things down, but Matthew 10, 1. I'm going to read here because I have highlights in my notes. Matthew 10, 1. And when he had called unto him his twelve disciples, he gave them power against unclean spirits to cast them out and to heal all manner of sickness and all manner of disease. He's also telling them to go and teach, uh, as other scripture, uh, the kingdom of heaven is what they're teaching. They're preaching the kingdom of heaven. But he gives them power to do all these miracles, signs, and wonders because Jews require a sign. Verse 2, Now the names of the twelve apostles are these, the first Simon, who was called Peter, and Andrew his brother, James the son of Zebedee, and John his brother, Philip and Bartholomew, Thomas and Matthew the publican, James the son of Alphaeus, and... Lebeus, whose surname was Thaddeus, Simon the Canaanite, and Judas Iscariot, who also betrayed him. Okay. Whole another study, but I believe Judas Iscariot started out on the straight and narrow, but didn't last. Why? Because in this time period, it's works. Okay. Faith, but there's works. Okay. There's faith and works. You had to believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God, and you had to repent and be baptized. Water baptism, and you had to, there was works. Jesus said, Woe to the man that betrayed me, for it would been better if he were not even born. Why? Because there was sin unto death. Why people can't get dispensationalism? Because they don't want to abide by this book. They don't want this book to be the final authority. They don't want to be in subjection to this book. They just love messing it up and playing God. They love their sin, their wickedness, the worldness, whatever they're trying to justify by messing this up. Who also betrayed him. Verse 5. The twelve Jesus sent forth and commanded them, saying, Go not in the way of the Gentiles, and into any city of the Samaritans. I still believe the Samaritans, more than anything, were, were fe either they were Jews that had lost the inheritance, or they were filled with Jews that lost their inheritance. They invited them in. and Because that's why uh, the Jews had no dealings with the Samaritans. They deal with Gentiles, but they had no business dealings, any dealings with the Samaritans. And then you have that Samaritan woman at the well talking about this well that Jacob, our father, Jacob, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, our father, uh, Doug, that was a Jew, but she was called Samaritan. Anyway, whole other study. And to any city of the Samaritans enter ye not, but go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. And as you go, preach, saying, the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Is that the gospel for today? No. So they're preaching the kingdom of heaven is at hand. And they're only supposed to go to the Jewish people. Why? Because John, you know, John 4, 22. John 4, 22. Remember, you can always pause the video and turn. John 4, 22. That's what I do with everyone's study. Pause, turn, unpause. Pause, turn, unpause. John 4, 22. Ye worship, ye know not what. We know what we worship. This is the woman at the well. For salvation is of the Jews. Salvations of the Jews. Now this was before the death of Jesus Christ on the cross. What happened after the death of Jesus Christ? Well, Romans 1.6, we read in Romans 1.16, sorry, 1.16, For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth, to the Jew first, and also the Greek. What happened? Something changed. We're in a different dispensation. There's a different gospel today. In the kingdom of heaven, there's still some people trying to mix the kingdom of heaven with the kingdom of God. The, uh, the, the spiritual kingdom, how we get saved today. This, they're trying to mix the salvation of today with the kingdom of heaven, with water baptism. Why is that? Because the kingdom of heaven is going to come back in the time of Jacob's trouble, and they want the body of Christ to go through the time of Jacob's trouble. Uh, we don't go through the time of Jacob's trouble. The kingdom of heaven is going to be preached in that time of Jacob's trouble. Jesus is coming back. Get ready. 
He's coming back to rule and reign. Are we supposed to be living as if Jesus Christ is, Jesus Christ is going to come back today to rule and reign? No. We're supposed to be looking for that blessed hope. That he will claim his bride. Okay? Take his bride home, the body of Christ. We're looking for that blessed hope with the life that we're living. We're not looking for the time of Jacob's trouble, even though some brethren are getting distra distracted by the world and starting to look for the time of Jacob's trouble. We're not supposed to be looking for the time of Jacob's trouble. We're not supposed to be looking for the day of the Lord where Jesus comes back. We're supposed to be looking for the catching away, the day of Christ, that blessed hope. When we get caught, when the bride of Christ will get caught up. Okay. But today, different dispensation. When Jesus was there, salvation is of the Jews. Today, salvation is for everybody. It's gone out to the world. 2 Timothy 4.17 2 Timothy 4.17 Notwithstanding, the Lord stood with me and strengthened me, that by me the preaching might be fully known, this is Paul talking to Timothy, and that all the Gentiles might hear, and I was delivered out of the mouth of the lion, that all the Gentiles might hear. Salvation's gone out to the Jews and the Gentiles. Sometimes I'll say Jew and Greek, but to the Gentiles, to the whole world. Paul is the apostle to the Gentiles. John the Baptist started out the kingdom of heaven because that's what he was called to do. He started preaching the kingdom of heaven, was thrown in prison, and Jesus took up that mantle because it was meant for him to begin with, and he started preaching the kingdom of heaven. Now, in the, in the Gospels, you can read him talking about this dispensation, future prophecy. That's where we get the title for this time period, the time of the Gentiles. But when he's talking to the Jewish people, he's preaching predominantly the kingdom of heaven. There's times where Peter and some of his apostles come to him and say, show us the end times. What will the last days be like? And he's talking about the time of Jacob's trouble, going into the kingdom of heaven, which is the part of the kingdom of heaven, going into the day of the Lord. You have the time of Jacob's trouble, the day of the Lord, and Satan is let loose for a while. And all three of these is the kingdom of heaven as a whole. And he starts talking about the kingdom of heaven. He starts talking about the future. But when he's out there with everyone else telling parables, the kingdom of heaven is likened unto this. The kingdom of heaven is likened unto this in Matthew. And then Mark and Luke will say kingdom of God. And people say, well, since it says kingdom of God, it's different. No, it isn't. It's still talking about the kingdom of heaven. Kingdom of heaven and kingdom of God can be the same thing. Kingdom of God, remember, God has two kingdoms. So the kingdom of God has two kingdoms. The spiritual and the physical. Whole other study. But kingdom of God can be a reference to the kingdom of heaven. Or it can be a, a reference to the spiritual kingdom, which we have today. Okay? They grab the one verse that says, the kingdom of God is not meat and drink. And they keep going talking about spirit, how it's spiritual. And they say that that must mean every time it says kingdom of God, it's got to be that way. Uh, no, you're supposed to compare scripture with scripture. And we did that. When it was talking about kingdom of heaven in Matthew, the same stories being retold in Ma uh, Mark and Luke, and it's the king, it says kingdom of God, but it's talking about the kingdom of heaven. So kingdom of God can mean kingdom of heaven, or it can mean the spiritual kingdom. Okay. But Paul's the apostle to the Gentiles today. Through Peter, though, pre, though Peter preached the Gentiles a time or two along with the others, but Paul was the one that God chose to go out to the Gentile world and let them know you can get saved too. Salvation is no longer just of the Jews. You guys can be grafted in. One thing he did warn is, don't, don't throw the Jews out. God's not done with them. Okay? Don't throw them out. <laughs> but this is the dispensation, the, the sal salvation. That's why it's called, I believe it's called the time of the Gentiles. Salvation has gone out to the world. Gentiles can now get saved just like the Jew can. It's a different gospel than it was back in the kingdom. It's not the kingdom of heaven. We're not under the kingdom of God, but we're under the gospel of repentance towards God, faith in our Lord Jesus Christ, the finished work of Jesus Christ on the cross, not just knowing his death, burial, and resurrection, and having this idea in our head that he died for the sins of the world, but actually having a belief in it. Sin is wrong. There's a cost to sin, and he paid it. Confessing both in prayer and asking God to save you. That gospel has now gone out to the whole world. That's not the same gospel for the time of Jacob's trouble. Okay. Now, we're talking about church, so let's get back to the word church. What's this time period called? The time of the Gentiles. 
That's just what it's called. Salvation's gone out to the world. I always have to say this. It doesn't mean only Gentiles can get saved. It means now Gentiles can get saved. It's predominantly the world. Anybody can get saved. Whereas before, it was time, uh, the salvation was only of the Jews. Okay. Now, church. I looked up the word church. The question that we have to ask, why would they change it? And I've already talked about it a little bit. Why would they change uh, time of the Gentiles to church age? Why would they do that? Well, here's, here's a question I'd ask. Is the word church limited to this dispensation? And only this dispensation? We're going to find out that's why they changed it. They wanted to be able to grab every time church is mentioned and say it's talking about today, for us today, to us today doctrinally. When it's not. There's things they're grabbing from other dispensations that aren't doctrinally for us today. Okay? That's the whole point. A church is a called out assembly. People called out to be separate from the rest of the world. We're going to learn this. Because the Jews were called a church coming out of Egypt. What's Egypt? A type of the world. Once again, I'm getting ahead of myself, but it's a called out assembly, but not just called out, called out from the world to be separate from the world. We're supposed to be a light to this dark world. We're supposed to be ambassadors for Jesus Christ. That's the church that's for today. But in the Old Testament, you had his chosen people that were pulled out from the world. They're supposed to be separate from the world. Okay. Now, the Webster's 1828 dictionary, I have it over here, they try to weasel in that, it, that church can be a building. It says in Webster's 1820 Dictionary, a house consecrated to the worship of God. That's nowhere in Scripture. Nowhere is church ever used for a building. Not once. A place, a, a house consecrated to the worship of God. Nowhere is that at in here. Where did that garbage come from? Church fathers? Traditions of men? Catholicism? Trying to grab from the Old Testament where they did have a house. They had um, uh, synagogues. They had the, t the Roman temple, <laughs> which is the, 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 ta uh, the tabernacle, the Roman temple. Then they built a physical temple, and then they started building little synagogues all over the place. So they didn't have to, they had to travel to the, they're supposed to travel to the temple one time a year to do animal sacrifices and whatnot. And I think it's the Passover, to observe the Passover. But for the most part, there was houses that were consecrated to the worship of God. And when they came together, they assembled. Okay. So maybe this definition is trying to grab from the Old Testament, but it makes it apply to, like, when we keep reading this, it makes it apply today, because right after it says comma, among Christians. Christians are only today. There are no Christians in the, in the Old Testament. There are no Christians in the time of Jacob's trouble. There are no Christians in the day of the Lord. Okay, Christians is just for today. They're saints in the time of Jacob's trouble. They're saints can be used today. Saints can be used for us today. Saints in the Old Testament. Okay, saints is universal for anybody that's called out and serves God. Okay, you're a saint when you're called out to be separate from the world and you're serving God. It's a whole nother like a word study of the word saint. But among Christians, the Lord's house, that's false. That's 100% false, but this, let's get to the last part of this. This seems to be the original meaning of the word. The Greek, when it gets back to the Greek, what does it mean? To call out or call together. This notes an assembly or collection. That's what it means. That's what church really means. It's just a called out assembly. People that are called out from this world that belong to God. Okay, that's what a church is. It's not a building. But they try to sneak it in with the definition. I don't always go off of this. This is the final authority. And we've done word studies on church. Other brethren have done word studies on church. Church is never a building. Never a building. It's always the group of people. And not just any people, but saved people that God saved and called out to be separate from this world. Okay. Let's look at the first time church is mentioned in the Old Testament. You say, What? It's not mentioned in the Old Testament. Nowhere is it mentioned in the Old Testament. Brothers says Christ, the Gospels, until Jesus dies on the cross, we learn this in the book of Hebrews when it comes to dispens uh, dispensation and a testament, that when the New Testament comes in, is at the death of Jesus Christ on the cross. So anything before the death of Jesus Christ on the cross is Old 
Testament. They're under the Old Testament. That's why when Jesus healed people, he said, go to the, to the temple or the synagogue and give the offering that's mainly the temple, give the offering that's required by Moses for what I did for you, for the cleansing, okay, for the healing. Right? When Jesus was born, uh, his parents, or not his parents, his, his stepdad, if you want to say stepdad, but his mother and stepdad, Joseph and Mary, they took two turtle doves. They were poor. They took two turtle doves for them. Why? Because they still had to be doing animal sacrifices. They were still under the Old Testament. Okay. So Matthew chapter 16, verse 13 is where we're going to start. Okay. Because this is important. Okay. Remember, the kingdom of heaven is being preached. This is another evidence that this is what it means to confess Jesus Christ when it comes to the kingdom of heaven. When Jesus came into the coast of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, saying, Whom do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? And they said, Some say that thou art the John, John the Baptist. Thou art John the Baptist. Some say Elias, other Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. He saith unto them, But whom say ye that I am? Remember, repent and be baptized for the remission of sins, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. What does it mean by the kingdom of heaven is at hand? What's the faith that they're supposed to have? The works repent of their sins. Turn from their wickedness. They get water baptized because the Jews require a sign. It's an outward showing. It's a sign. Okay. And then what, what, what's the faith? We're going to get into that faith when it comes to the kingdom of heaven. And Simon Peter answered and said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. Thou art the Christ, the Son of the... You're the king. You're here to, to rule and reign for a thousand years. You're the king. You're the Christ. And Jesus answered, You're God manifest in the flesh. Not just any man here to rule and reign, but God the Father manifest in the flesh to rule and reign. Jesus answered and said unto him, Blessed art thou, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood hath not revealed it unto thee, but my Father which is in heaven. And I say also unto thee, Thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church. You know how many times people try to grab that word church and try to apply it to today when it doesn't even apply to today? It's talking about the kingdom of heaven. Not the death. He didn't have to believe in the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. No, he had to believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God. And you'll see this. Okay. He came and they reject him. That can't be the Christ. He's not the Christ. And they keep rejecting him. Okay. The church here is the called out assembly of Jews that repented, were baptized, and they believe that he is the Christ, the Son of the living God. And he's here to rule and reign. He's their king. Okay. That's the church that this is talking about. It's not talking about today. But when you change that time period to today's dispensation to the church age, then any time it mentions church, it has to be for today, right? No, it doesn't. This is not for today. And the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. And I will give unto thee the keys of what? The kingdom of God today, how we get saved today? No, it says the keys of the kingdom of heaven. The church here is talking about the kingdom of heaven. We're going to get into this in Revelation. Those churches aren't for today. They're for the kingdom of heaven. We can learn from those churches. We can learn from their mistakes. We can, try, we, we can learn what pleases God and what doesn't please God. But we're going to get into that a little bit. Those churches aren't for today. They're for the kingdom of heaven. But how do you mess people up? We're just going to call this the church age. That way, anytime church is mentioned, it has to be talking about today. Therefore, we can make Peter the first pope. That's not even for today. The church they're grabbing from there, that's not even for today. It was for when Jesus was walking on the earth and for the time of Jacob's trouble going into the kingdom of heaven, uh, the day of the Lord, the thousand year reign of Jesus Christ. And then when Satan's let loose for a little while. That's what this church is. Let's keep going. And whatsoever thou shalt bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. And whatsoever thou shalt loose on earth shall be loose in heaven. Remember that. Okay? The kingdom of heaven got put off when the Jews as a whole rejected that Jesus was the Christ, the Son of the living God. That he was their king. They crucified their king. 
Remember Pontius Pilate, shall I crucify your king? What did they say? We have no king but Caesar. They rejected their king for a Gentile king. We have no king but Caesar. Oh yeah. Remember salvation when Jesus was walking on the earth was repent and be baptized with water. Not the Holy Spirit. Water. And this is a whole other study because I'll get into it eventually. I believe it's wrong to be water baptized today. I really do. Because it's not for today. You're grabbing from a different gospel, a different dispensation, and trying to apply it today. Today we're supposed to be baptized with the Holy Spirit. When Jesus said go out and baptize all nations, he's not talking about water. He's talking about the Holy Spirit. He baptizes with the Holy Spirit. Okay. You have some brethren that you know, what we're talking to be we're worried about. If I didn't ever got water baptized, does that mean I'm not saved? No, you're saved today because you were baptized with the Holy Spirit. Water and you get some people that claim water baptism is not a requirement for today. But you should do it after salvation. Wait a minute, you just made it a requirement after you just said it wasn't a requirement. It's called double talk. If it's not required for salvation and it's not a command to do after salvation, where do you get that? Because it's not. In the book of Acts, the transition period where they're still preaching the kingdom of heaven and there's water baptism, along with the Holy Ghost baptism, you have both baptisms there. After a while, the water baptism goes away because the Jews reject Jesus as their king again. They reject him as their king, as Jesus, uh, the, the Christ, the Son of the living God. God manifest in the flesh. He rose from the third day proving that he's God, but they still rejected him as God. Water baptism goes away. But it was there for the kingdom of heaven gospel. For the kingdom of heaven is at hand. For the kingdom of heaven is at hand. They had to believe that Jesus is the Christ. But the word church is used, called out assembly. Those Jews that believed that Jesus was the Christ, it got down to where it was just the twelve apostles. Then when you get in the book of Acts, you have the twelve apostles, after they fled from them and, and deserted them, they came back. Then you have the common people start, some of them came back, not all, but some came back, but then the ruling class, the religious and ruling class, they still rejected him. Needed all three to accept him for the kingdom of heaven to come in, in the book of Acts. You have Stephen, Stephen, I know I'm going off a little bit, but forgive me. But you have Stephen that's being stoned to death. He looks up and sees Jesus standing, not sitting, standing. He's ready to come back if that ruling class would accept him. But that ruling class stoned Stephen to death rejecting Jesus Christ yet again as their king, as the Christ, the Son of the living God. Water baptism, baptism gone. Now it's just Holy Spirit baptism. We preach the gospel, Jesus baptizes. I preach the gospel, I don't baptize anybody. Remember Paul, God hasn't called me to baptize anybody, called me to baptize anybody. Why? He called him to preach the gospel so Jesus Christ could baptize people with the Holy Spirit. You can get truly saved and born again. Matthew 18, 17. Matthew 18, 17. Let's look at the second time it's mentioned. Remember the first time it's mentioned in conjunction with the kingdom of heaven. Is that for today? No. So this church here that, that Jesus is talking about was in his day. because he. I, people always say, well, they, Jesus knew they were going to reject you. Yes, he knew they were going to reject him, but he still had to offer it to them. Why? Because God is God. He's perfect. If I said, I knew you wouldn't believe, that's why I didn't preach the gospel to you, you could stand before God and say, I never knew the truth. And he would be an unjust God. The gospel still had to be preached to you, time, talking about the lost world, time and time again, to hold them accountable. So when they do stand before Jesus Christ as a lost man or a lost woman, they are without excuse. When those Jews that rejected Jesus Christ, the kingdom of heaven, and then turned around and rejected Jesus Christ for the kingdom of God, in the New Testament today, they're without excuse. Okay. He still had to offer it to them. So, church there is part of the kingdom of God that he's setting up there, and then it'll be started up again in the time of Jacob's trouble. Only the two witnesses, it won't be the apostles, it'll be the two witnesses. And who are the two witnesses in the time of Jacob's trouble? Moses and Elijah. They're, I believe they're going to be preaching the kingdom of heaven, gospel all over again. Repent for your, and believe in Jesus Christ, for he's coming back. He's coming back any day now. You better get right with God. Not coming back to take his bride home. I'm talking about coming back to rule and reign for a thousand years. That kingdom of heaven is going to come back in the, in the time of Jacob's trouble. 
There's going to be a mix of the kingdom of heaven and the kingdom of God together in the time of Jacob's trouble. Matthew 18, 17, there's going to be works and faith. And then when you get into the actual day of the Lord, it's just works. Matthew 18, 17. Second time that church is mentioned. Verse 17. And I remember reading all of this. Go back to 15. It says, Moreover, if thy brother shall trespass against thee, go and tell him his fault between thee and him alone. If he shall hear thee, thou hast gained thy brother. I use this for instruction in righteousness. How are we supposed to confront a brother in Christ? Here's how you confront a brother in Christ. With love. Okay. But today, brethren don't want to confront one another. When there's a disagreement, or when you feel like you've been wronged by a brother in Christ, you don't confront them. You just kick them to the curb like they're nothing. This says, Moreover, if thy brother shall trespass against thee, go and tell him his fault between thee and him alone. If he shall hear thee, thou hast gained thy brother. But if he will not hear thee, then take with thee one or two more, that in the mouth of two or three witnesses every word may be established. And if he shall neglect to hear them, tell it unto the church. But if he neglect to hear the church, let him be unto thee as a heathen man and a publican. Let him be as a heathen man and publican. And I have to correct myself. Remember, as we do studies, brothers and Christ, we correct ourselves. Is that for today? A heathen man and a publican. I always say that means you just treat them like they're lost as far as you, you, you to kick them out of your fellowship. Now, we're supposed to kick men out of our fellowship. But there's scripture where Paul says, don't treat them like a lost person but admonish him as a brother. Remember, he's still a brother in Christ. This says, oh no, he's a heathen man and a publican. He's to be as a heathen man and a publican. Instruction righteousness, I still like preaching that. If someone starts getting into wickedness and sin, you have to treat them like they're lost as far as you're not allowed to fellowship with the lost world. That's what the Bible says. You're not allowed to you kick them out of your fellowship until they get their heart right with God and come back in. But you say, that's not strong enough to prove that it's talking about a different dispensation. Okay. Go all the way back to verse 1. But remember it says church there. It says, And if he shall neglect to hear them, tell it unto the whole church. It's a called out assembly. Is that church talking about today? The bride of Christ. The body of Christ. Go back to 18 verse 1. Go all the way back up to verse 1. And at the same time came the disciples unto Jesus, saying, Who is greatest in the kingdom of of heaven, he's still preaching the kingdom of heaven. This is talking about how you're supposed to act mainly in the kingdom of heaven. These are instructions for the kingdom of heaven. Okay. Verse 18 says, Verily I say unto you, Whoso shall bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatsoever shall be loosed on earth shall be loosed in heaven. We just read 17, it says, Tell it unto the church. Then you get to verse 18, it says, Whoso shall bind... Ye shall bind on earth, shall be bound in heaven. Where did we read that? Remember I said, remember that? In Matthew? Matthew 19, it says, when he's talking about, And I will give unto thee the keys of the kingdom of heaven. And whosoever ye shall bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whoso shall be loosed on earth shall be loosed in heaven. You get all the way down here, it says the same thing. Verse 18, Verily I say unto you, Whoso sh whatsoever ye shall bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatsoever ye shall loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. What is this? It's the kingdom of heaven. You can't get around it. It's the kingdom of heaven. It's not for today. But people will grab this and try to say, this is doctrinally for today. No, these are things that you can fail this and lose your salvation in the kingdom of heaven. Okay, in that day of the Lord. Okay, Today it's instruction righteousness. This is like, okay, we see here that we need to work things out and we need to get right with one another so we can be on the same path because if we're always fighting one another and we don't get, Paul says we're supposed to be of the same mind and of the same judgment, striving together. There's things in the Pauline epistle that kind of line up with this that talk about we need to come together and we need to work things out. If you're wrong, you need to repent so we can come together. If, you're, if you have sin in your life, you need to give it up. you got worldliness in your life, you need to put God first, you need to put the Word first, you need to put the brethren uh, God first and His Word first, your walk with Him second, the brethren third, if you're a man in ministry, I always say the ministry comes third, then fourth is the, is the brethren, but you know what I'm saying, that order, 
when worldliness comes in, the world comes first, things of the world comes first, and they mess up the order of, a, of, of priority in your life, brother says Christ. Okay. But Paul talks about that. We need to be striving together. Get that sin out of your life. Make sure your priorities are straight. Make sure God's coming first, and make sure you love your brothers and sisters in Christ. But here, I just proved, clear as day, that it's all about the kingdom of heaven. Is the kingdom of heaven for today? No. So we see church mentioned twice, and it's talking to the Jewish people going into the kingdom of heaven where Jesus is going to rule and reign. Now, I believe once Jesus starts ruling and reigning the whole earth, because when he first came, he came to be the king of the Jewish people. When he comes back, he's going to rule and reign the whole earth. Everyone. Okay? And this is going to apply to everyone in the day of the Lord. But we see church is mentioned twice, and it's not even for this dispensation. It's not doctrinally for us today. So what's going on here? When you say this is the church age, you can steal from those things and apply it today. And the Catholic Church loves stealing and making uh, Peter the first pope. But Peter and that church that it's talking about isn't even for today. It's not for this dispensation. Okay? It's for the, for the kingdom of heaven. And the kingdom of heaven got put off. And it will come back in the time of Jacob's trouble. What about further back in the Old Testament? Is this the only time that church is mentioned for people in the Old Testament? Because we saw the first two times. Uh, turn to Acts 7.35. Sorry for this being a while, but I really want to drive this home and prove that church is not always mentioning people in this dispensation. You've got to be careful. Acts 7.35. Acts 7.35, this Moses whom they refused, saying, it's talking about Moses in the Old Testament, they came out of the Egypt, they're about to go in the wilderness. This Moses whom they refused, saying, who made thee a ruler and a judge, the same did God send to be a ruler and a deliverer by the hand of the angel, which appeared to him in the bush. Hand of the angel? Jesus Christ. But it was the Holy Spirit. But that goes back into the Godhead. They're, they're all one. So if the Holy Spirit's in that burning bush Jesus, and speaking to him, it's God speaking to him, God the Father, it's Jesus Christ. The angel, it says there was an angel in the bush. The angel of the Lord, Jesus Christ. Anyway, the same did God send to be a ruler deliver bush, 36. He brought them out after that he had showed wonders, signs in the lands of Egypt and in the Red Sea and in the wilderness 40 years this is that Moses which said unto the children of Israel, A prophet shall the Lord your God raise up unto you of your brethren, like unto me. Like unto me. Okay. Talking about Jesus Christ. Him shall ye hear. Right. This is he that was in the church in the wilderness with the angel which spake to him in the Mount Sinai and with our fathers who received the lively oracles to give unto us, to whom our Father would not obey, but thrust him from them, and in their hearts turned back again into Egypt. The church is a called out assembly that's called out of the world. Remember, Egypt's the type of the world. And the Jews were considered a church coming out of Egypt. A called out assembly set apart for God. Okay. That's what a church is. But we see here, it's, it's talking about the church that Moses was part of. Mo okay. Moses was called to bring the Jews out of Egypt and they had to go through the wilderness. What about Revelation? Okay. If I haven't got this, I, I didn't mention, I, I was going to put it in there, but I didn't. I didn't mention when church is mentioned today because church is mentioned today. It's okay to use the word church for today. But remember, when you say church age, they say, they make out like anytime church is mentioned, it has to do with today. Because this is the only church age. This is the only time there's church. Because it's only for today. The church age. No, it isn't. That's why this time period is not called the church age. It's called the time of the Gentiles. Okay? A good example of this is you go to Revelation. Revelation chapter 1. Revelation chapter 1 verse 20. We read, the mystery of the seven stars which thou sawest in my right hand and the seven golden candlesticks. The seven stars are the angels of the seven churches. 
and the seven candlesticks which thou sawest are the seven churches. And we always have people compl uh, fighting over this. Are these churches for today? Are they churches in the time of Jacob's trouble? Are they churches in another dispensation, like the day of the Lord? They're churches in the time of Jacob's trouble going into the day of the Lord and when Satan's let loose at the end. Okay, It's for the whole kingdom of heaven, I believe. Okay, why? Because today the Bible says, we're going to get into this, we are sealed into the day of redemption. Our eternal life comes from Jesus Christ. Okay? Our life is in Him. We get our eternal life through Him. That's what the bride of Christ today, the body of Christ today. We get our life through Jesus Christ. We get our eternal life through Jesus Christ. Let's go ahead and read uh, Revelation 2.1. We're just going to read one of the churches, but you can go through and... Through the study, continue the study, and go through all the churches, and you realize they're all being judged on their works. Let's read this. Unto the angel of the church of Ephesus write, These things saith he that holdeth the seven stars in his right hand, who walketh in the midst of the seven golden candlesticks. I know thy works. They're all being judged based off their works. All of them. These are churches that, are, that their salvation is based off of works. Not once does it talk about, I know thy faith, I know thy faith, I know thy faith. It does mention faith a little bit here and there, but I know thy works, and thy labor, and thy patience, and how thou canst not bear them which are evil, and thou hast tried them which say they are apostles. Are there apostles today? No. Try the apostles, and are not, and hast found them liars. People always say for instruction rightness. Are there people trying to claim to be apostles today in false religions? Yes, there are. But this is mainly, I believe, for the time of Jacob's trouble going into the day of the Lord. Okay. Try them, because the, remember what the apostles were for the Jews. Remember what we just read? Jesus said, go not in the way of the, uh, the Gentiles nor the Samaritans, but only to the Jews, because salvation is only of the Jews. So what's the point of having apostles today? to preach to the Jews. But you have Gentiles, like I think it's Mormons, Gentiles trying to pretend that they have apostles. It's all just to, to, to mess things up. But in the time of Jacob's trouble, when things go back to being God focusing on the Jews, I believe there's going to be false people standing up as, God, as Jews, standing up saying, I'm an apostle, and you need to listen to me. And they're false. Remember, there's no apostles. God sends two witnesses, not apostles anymore. He, he had apostles... When he first came, but in the time of Jacob's trouble, he's going to be sending two witnesses, Moses and Elijah. But you're going to have people trying to stand up saying, I'm an apostle, I'm an apostle. That's not for today. Okay, there are no apostles today. Apostle is someone who has seen Christ and were chosen by Christ to have that title and to have that office. And there's signs to prove that office. Okay? You can go look that up on your own, brother says Christ. Verse 3, and has borne and has patience, and for my name's sake has labored and has not fainted. Nevertheless, there's always places we can improve ourselves, brother says Christ. That's what we can learn from them. They're doing good. They hate evil. They're trying to do their best. Nevertheless, there's always areas in our walk with the Lord that we can, we can improve on. That we, there's always areas in our life that we can do better for the Lord. I have somewhat against thee, because thou hast that left thy first love. Remember, therefore, from whence thou art fallen, and repent, and do the first works, or else I will come unto thee quickly, and will remove thy candlestick out of his place. It almost sounds like you lose your salvation. Okay? Except thou repent. But this thou hast, that thou hatest the deeds of the Nicolaitans, which I also hate. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. To him that overcometh. We've already talked about this. In the time of Jacob's trouble, there is no I'm saved present tense. There is today. I'm sealed into the day of redemption. Grieve not the Holy Spirit, whereby ye are sealed into the day of redemption. These things have I written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God, that ye may know you have eternal life. Know ye have eternal life. Why? Because our eternal life is, from, is through Jesus Christ. Know that you have eternal life, and that you may believe on the name of the Son of God. But in that time period, we talked about some of the kingdom of heaven uh, parables that Jesus was preaching. You And the Sermon on the Mount, you have to endure to the end. And once you make it to the end, then you shall be saved. 
To him that overcometh will I give to eat of the tree of life. Him that overcometh? And do we get our eternal life from the tree of life, or do we get it from Jesus Christ? We get it from Jesus Christ. When does the tree of life come into play? When the, this heaven, the heavens that we can see, not the top of them. Remember, there's three heavens. But the heavens that we can see, the stars, the clouds, this heaven and this earth gets destroyed, and God creates a new heaven and a new earth, and new Jerusalem comes down out of heaven. And what's inside new Jerusalem? The tree of life. Those that make it through the time of Jacob's trouble, they go into the day of the Lord. Satan's let loose for a little while. They don't get deceived by Satan, and they stay true to God. Those people go into the new heaven and the new earth, and they're the ones that are living off that tree of life. That's not us. Okay? But you see here, I give unto the tree of life, which is in the midst of the paradise of God. Where's the tree of life right now? It's in heaven. Okay, where's the tree of life in the Old Testament? It was on earth, and then after the flood, I believe God took it to heaven. And he's got New Jerusalem. He's, remember the Bible says he's preparing a place for us. We're going to have a place there, I believe, in that New Jerusalem. He's preparing a place for us. But that New Jerusalem comes down. It's paradise. It's heaven on earth. Well, today, brethren, people are always trying to look for a heaven on earth today. They'll never find it. Because this earth has to pass away. For the, new, for, the, for the New Jerusalem to come down. Paradise. In the midst of paradise. But you can read this in the back of, in the end of, of uh, Revelation 18, 19, 20 to 22. I kind of have I don't know how it in my notes. To him that overcometh will I give thee of the tree of life. This church isn't for today, brother, says Christ. We can learn from it. We can learn from it for instruction in righteousness. We can learn that there are some brethren that are doing this right or doing that right. For the Lord, there's instruction in righteousness, but these churches are not for today, period. The moment it talks about how you can, he'll remove your candlestick out of his place, how you can lose your salvation, and that you have to overcome works. There's works. You have to overcome to have eternal life, and that eternal life is not in Jesus Christ. It's in a tree of life. It's not for us, brothers and Christ. You really got to not love the truth. You really got to be ignorant of Scripture. You really got to be a servant set of Satan to try to grab these churches and say they're 100% for today. They're not. They're not. These churches are being judged on their works, can be removed, and have, overcome, have to overcome to have the right to eternal life. And that eternal life is in the tree of life, not Jesus Christ. Now you can read about all the churches. I believe they are churches in the time of Jacob's trouble going into the kingdom of heaven. The day of the Lord. But remember, when you change the word of God, saying it's the time, today is not the time of Jacob's trouble, or today's, that, that time period is not the time of Jacob's trouble. They change it so the church, the body of Christ goes into that because here's churches. But the church age, this is the church age. So this has to be talking about today. Chapter and verse where it says church age. It doesn't. It says it's the time of the Gentiles where salvation goes out to the whole world. I believe, and people don't like to preach this, but I, I believe when it gets to the time of Jacob's trouble, salvation is going to be reined in towards back to the Jewish people. Who are sealed in the time of Jacob's trouble? Today, anybody. You have Jews and Gentiles. We are all who get saved and born again. We are sealed into the day of redemption. In the time of Jacob's trouble, who's sealed? 144,000 of the Jews. 12,000 from each of the 12 tribes, I think it is. They're sealed. Salvation goes back to being of the Jews. Okay. And people can't handle that. But when you change the, de the, the title for this time period, you can grab from different dispensations and bring it under this one and say it's all about us. This is talking about us. You guys got to earn salvation. You can lose it. Okay, Proverbs 36. I'll keep reading this. Add thou not unto his words, lest he reprove thee, and thou be found a liar. Anytime I've ever said church age, I was a liar. Anytime the body of Christ got sucker, uh, deceived, um, indoctrinated into saying church age, they were liars. And it's so easy to prove that that's false. That's a lie. There is no church age today. There's churches in all, all dispensations when you're called out. Now the Bible doesn't say this, but you have Noah. He was a preacher of righteousness. He was separate from the wicked world. 
And God, God called him out from the rest of the wicked world to start, uh, and his family, to start building an ark. Could that be a church? Yeah. Okay. He's called out to be separate. Okay. So when we change the word of God, the time of the Gentiles to the church age, you can steal from other dispensations and make it for today. And that's what they love doing. They love doing it. If you want to believe works to be saved, you can do it because we stole from all these different dispensations where there is works involved. The first two times church is mentioned, there's works involved as part of salvation. Okay? Repent and be baptized for the mission of sins. You have to turn from your wickedness. You have to turn from your sin. And believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God. Oh, you want to believe in works? Right here. In Revelation, see it says church, so if you want to believe in works to be saved, you can when we say church age. If you want to believe you can lose your salvation, church age. If you want to believe that you're sealed and can lose your salvation, church age. Uh, if you want to believe uh, salvation is grace through faith, there's no works involved to get saved, church age. You want to believe there's works involved to get saved, church age. But when you say time of the Gentiles, it cuts half and a lot of that stuff out. Time of the Gentiles. It's God's grace through faith. And you can't do any works to get saved after salvation is when the good works come in. And you're sealed into the day of redemption. There is no losing salvation today. Okay? You're sealed. You actually have salvation the moment you get saved and born again. You have it. Time of Jacob's trouble, you don't have it. The kingdom of heaven, you don't have it. You have to endure to the end. Kingdom of heaven, that's all. The day of the Lord. Time of Jacob's trouble, the day of the Lord, when Satan's let loose for a season, you have to endure to the end. you got to make it to the end. And then you shall be saved. We have salvation today, and that salvation we have today is in Jesus Christ. Our eternal life comes from Jesus Christ, not a tree. When you actually use the proper title for this time period, the time of the Gentiles, all the lies and deception gets cut out. And these people don't like that. They don't like it at all. Okay. There's some, but remember we just talked about Nicolaitans. What's the best way to control people? Make them, make them. You put fear in them, where they start fearing you instead of God, first and foremost. But they start fearing that they can that they can lose their salvation or that they have to earn salvation, and you can control them. Okay. That's what's going on today. So, so brothers and sisters in Christ. That's why it's important. Some people say, it's not a big deal. It's not a big deal. After this study, if you still think it's not a big deal, and it's okay to say church age, you're not a Bible believer. I'm going to call you out for it. You're not a Bible believer. There is no church age. It's the time of the Gentiles. And like I said, I might have missed something. I'm not perfect. But if you find another title for this, for this dispensation, um, go for it. Show me. Show me the the in the... Comment section, by all means. But brothers and Christ, we need to get back to the Word of God and we need to get back to saying things God's way. Period. Okay. So I'm praying for you, brothers and sisters of Christ, that we get back to doing things God's way, we get back to lining up with the Word of God. Please keep praying for me. And I want to end this study with grace and peace from God our Father and our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all and my love for you which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next study. And I want to do a PS. Just hit my Brothers of Christ, we cannot come back to being one. We cannot fight this division that's in the body of Christ until we come back to lining up with the Bible as the Bible is. Okay? The number one reason that's causing a lot of the dis, uh, division, there's two reasons. Justifying worldliness, idolatry, and the flesh. You know, trying to get this to conform to you so you can have this world, this wicked world. That's one reason it's causing division. But the biggest thing I see causing division is we're all fighting over words that aren't in the Bible. Church age. We're doing some of the smaller ones. We'll get some of the bigger ones that are really causing division. But this would cause division on someone who does, who's not a Bible believer that's a wolf in sheep's clothing comes in. Oh, it's not a big deal. It's not a big deal. We can say church age. It's not a big deal. Uh, no. Or some of the brethren that had been... The Bible says... Um, some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils, having their conscience seared. Some of the brethren, their conscience is so seared, they won't repent and turn from saying church age and get back to saying things God's way. It's the time of the Gentiles. 
this time period, our, our eternal life is through Jesus Christ, through the gospel for today. Repentance towards God, faith in the finished work of Jesus Christ on the cross. Confess both in prayer and ask God to save you. Okay. Their conscience is seared with a hot iron and they're not going to budge. This is not about cause and division, brothers and sisters. This is about bringing us back together in unity. As Paul said, we're supposed to be one, striving together. Okay. Uh, we're supposed to be the same mind, the same judgment. We're supposed to be one body. We're all supposed to be one in Christ Jesus, our Lord. And we're not acting like it. Why? Because Satan has come in down through the years, before I was even born, and started infecting the body of Christ with that disease that, yea, hath God said, a better rendering would be. And that in itself is what's caused so much division in the body of Christ all the way up today. Doctrines of devils get brought in. Brothers and Christ, we need to get back to lining up with the Scriptures. Please, please get back to lining up with the Scriptures. And if you've caused division and fighting because you didn't line up with the Scriptures, repent. And get your heart right with God first, and then make amends to the brethren that you've wronged. Please, okay? Get back to doing things God's way. Get back to saying things God's way. They, kind of, they go hand in hand, Brothers and Christ. If you're saying things God's way, chances are you're doing things God's way. Okay? And if you're not doing things God's way, it can always be traced back because you're not saying things God's way. You've found, Satan's found a way to get you to say things that aren't in the Scriptures. Believe things that aren't in the Scriptures. Okay? So I'll say it again. Grace and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you all and my love for you which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Thank you for watching. Keep me in your prayers. There's still a lot of work to be done around here. i got the garden to get set up for winter and uh, the chicken coop I'm working on. I, I'm just, part of me is frustrated that summer came by so fast. And I missed out a lot of summer because we had a lot of smoke here. So there's times where I couldn't be outside. And I'm not looking forward to winter where it's just going to be pouring down. I want rain. We need rain. But it's just going to be raining. That's what our winters are. And I'm going to be stuck inside. And all my outdoor fun was supposed to be summer. And I was really looking forward to this summer. But we had a lot of smoke this summer. Kind of ruined it. So I love you, my brothers and sisters in Christ. And I'll see you in the next video.